Hey, what's going on guys? This is Anthony from MSMD Perceptions and today we're doing a full retouch just of a face in the Photo Light Pro. Before, after, before, after. Photo Light Pro is a retouching pack for Adobe Photoshop. It's only $24.99 and it's very simple to use. Each effect creates a mask and an action so it's non-destructive and it's very simple to use. So the first thing you want to do is select your pack based on the resolution of your image. I'm using high resolution images, so I'm gonna be using the 5K pack. So what I'm gonna do is zoom into the image and we're showing a bunch of these effects used together. I have previous videos going through each feature one by one and showing what they do. But now we're really gonna pull it together and do a whole retouch. So I'm gonna start with some of the smaller details. And the first thing I'm gonna do is fix the redness down here. So I'm gonna find the skin redness fix feature and let's play that action okay and there we go okay and then i'm just gonna lower my brush opacity just a little bit and just get rid of some of that okay cool now i'm gonna select the background image again to apply the next feature I think I've had some issues when I had the previous mask selected and then tried to apply an action on top of that because some of them it seemed like they would only work in the area where the previous mask was applied so it would only work to here. Others haven't. I think I've been having issues with the frequency separation one. Even though the background layer is locked, it seems like with this frequency separation action it would still adjust, it would still affect the background image. And if I were to toggle the mask on and off, it seemed like it damaged the image itself. So if you know something that I don't know, please leave a comment down below and let me know what's going on. Unless maybe I just missed something or I did something wrong. But next thing I want to do, I want to get rid of the blemishes. So let's do the pore removal high. get rid of this oh let's turn my brush back up to 100 percent and i'm actually going to do the whole face with this because it removes pores from all over and it does soften the wrinkles and there are multiple ways to retouch an image with this pack or with other packs and in addition to doing this i'm also going to use some of the skin softening packs but very similar to this pore removal is the wrinkle softener so we're just gonna do this one first and then we're gonna combine it with the wrinkle softener and some of the other features and we're gonna see how they all work together and create a finished retouched face Okay, that looks pretty good, I like it. Whoops, I did the hair, so let's just hit X and recover that a little bit. It's non-destructive, we're just affecting the mask. Okay, so now we're gonna select the background layer again, and I really wanna soften up these veins right over here. So let's try the wrinkle softener for that one. And these veins really weren't that prominent in person, the issue is because I have my light over to this side over here, so when it's shining down on her, it's creating highlights and shadows that make the, ring, the veins look more prominent than they actually are. Okay, and this really isn't doing anything because I did the wrinkle soft, because I did the pore removal first. So I just turned off the pore removal layer, and I'm going to reduce the wrinkles with this one first. Let's turn the pore removal back on. And let's just switch around the layers, the order that these are layered in. And you can see that made a difference. So the order that you retouch it technically does matter versus if I bring it back down under that one, you see it doesn't really do anything. So let's just undo. So as long as you're able to move these masked layers around, I guess it doesn't really matter the order that you retouch it but at least knowing that the order of the layers matters is pretty important. And you can see that this is doing just a little bit extra for me. Okay, before and after. 
So it did help out a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, again, select the image that I wanna retouch, and let's go with skin correction high. The reason I like skin correction high is because I could always tone it down later on. Okay, increase the brush size, and look at that. That really helped with those veins right up there. Did a great job in getting rid of those. And what I'm going to do right now, before I even retouch the rest of the image with this, I'm going to get rid of the wrinkle softener temporarily. Yep. And even without the wrinkle softener, the skin correction high fixed that area. So it looks like the pores removal in addition to skin correction was enough. And let's just turn off the pores removal and on the wrinkle softener. And yes, that's enough as well. So using the skin correction with the wrinkle softener or using the skin correction with the pores removal will do a great job. So let's keep working with this skin correction and we're gonna go over the whole face. It's getting rid of some of those highlights in there. And you could still see so much texture in the cheek. You could see a little bit of the bumps, a little bit of the hairs even just that little peach fuzz, and it makes it look really nice and natural while smoothing out the skin. Okay, I don't like what it did over here, so I'm just gonna hit X and we're gonna get rid of that. Hit X again and we're gonna continue painting the rest of the face. Just in about five minutes, look how much of an effect we have on here. Look how smooth this face is. Let's toggle off all of these masks. And that's the before. And let's toggle them all on again. And look at that before and after. So this is a really nice, soft, retouched look. This is good for glamour. Um, this is good if you want a little bit more of a fake, plasticky type look. It looks a little too fake and plastic for me. So I'm going to keep working on this image, but if you wanted to stop here, you could. Or if you wanted to change some of these sliders and change the opacity to bring a little bit back, even just look at that, bringing down the skin correction high to 64% from 99%, it just added a little bit more of that character in her face of the natural imperfections, and I really love that. But just for now, let's bring it back up to 100. And let's keep doing some more of these features and let's keep working on this. Let's go with Skin Mattifier. So the Skin Mattifier is going to soften out the highlights and the shadows. Or at least it should. But that's not doing anything either. Okay, so let's change the order of the layers. Okay, there we go. Now once it was on top, you could really see a difference there. Okay, and I'm gonna change my brush opacity because I don't want too much of an effect over here. Okay, and let's toggle that one on and off. Okay, and it toned it down a little bit. So again, I'm not sure that I love that. It's up to you and what you want the image to look like. You know, you could see more of the shape of her cheeks in here. But again, maybe you just want to get rid of it around her cheeks. Let's try that. Maybe I just painted on too much of her face. And let's just paint it in at a lesser intensity. Okay, let's check that out. Okay, nice. So we're almost done here. Now what I'm gonna do is focus a little bit more on her features like her lips and her eyes. And then after that, I'm gonna come back to her skin. And there's no real reason why I'm doing this. It's just what I feel like doing right now. 
I don't think her eyes need to be enhanced. I like how they look. I like the color. I like the brightness. But if you wanted to do that, that's in here as well. It works really well. Let's go with the Bloodshot Red Eye Fixer because her eyes are a little bit red up in here. And I just want to neutralize that a little bit. Okay, and we'll make our brush a little bit smaller. Let's have our opacity up. Okay, and this thing is awesome. Oh, you know what? That probably shouldn't be removed too much. So let's let's just focus on, oops, let me paint that back in right there. Okay, it's a good part about working with masks. Okay, and now we're just gonna focus on the whites of the eyes first. And then I'm gonna change the opacity of the brush and brush that out to a lesser intensity. Just changing the brush size to get in these little crevices. Okay, now let's change the opacity to 20, okay, I'm at 22%. Let's knock that down just a little bit. And I'm just gonna click that a second time. So what that pretty much did is really lowered it by 44% because I went over that area twice. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Okay, just do that twice. And then I'm gonna go back up to 100%. And we're gonna get the whites in the eyes right here. Okay, so now I'm gonna zoom out of the image just to see how that looks. And it looks way too white to me, it looks way too fake. So what I'm gonna do is just lower the opacity of the whole mask. And that looks pretty good right in there to me at about 39%. So let's toggle that on and off. Good, and you can see it winded up just a little bit. I feel like the way to make images look the best, the way to enhance it the best, is to make small, subtle adjustments that are barely noticeable. If I were to toggle that back up to 100% and you see what that looks like, you could see that it looks way too fake. That's when things look creepy, that's when things look fake, is when you have effects on high intensity. But again, it depends on the look that you're going for. You might like this look. Maybe you want the Barbie look. Maybe you want the plastic doll look. But I don't, at least not for this image. So let's go back to about 40%. And that looks really great to me. So now we're going to select the background layer again. Let's go on the lip softener. Not that she needs it too much. She overall has good skin, a great smile, and really nice features. So she doesn't need as much work as if you were doing headshots for someone who is 60 or 65 years old, they would need more retouching with the wrinkles, with skin imperfections, with lip softening. So this is gonna do just a little bit for her. I feel like this is really, again, this is pretty much unnecessary for her, but it will do a little bit of something. Let's check that out before, after, before, after. Okay, it did a little bit, why not, right? Okay, so now, I think the last thing I want to do is add some skin texture in there. We did quite a lot of knocking down and smoothing the skin and getting the imperfections out, but again, it looks a little bit too fake and plastic-y plastic and smooth to me. So skin texture is going to add some texture back into the skin here for us. And I'm not sure about the layer order. Yeah, see, it doesn't appear to be doing anything right now. So let's just move it up layer by layer. Let's try above pore removal. Okay, didn't see it doing anything. Above wrinkle softener, nothing. Above skin correction. And there we go, now I see it. Okay, so if I toggle it on and off, you can see that I still have the smoothness of the skin there, but now I just have some more texture here. So again, this is going to be way too much skin texture for me. I could already tell it looks rough. It looks like sandpaper. I do not like this. But if you wanted to tone it down a little bit, 
you could tone it down with the brush opacity, but I'm gonna tone it down on the overall opacity layer globally right over there after I paint in her whole face. Okay, so I have pretty much her whole face painted in now with the skin texture. And now what I wanna do, let's zoom out just to see what it looks like. Okay, and from here it doesn't look all that bad. Let's toggle that one on and off. And you really can't see too much of a difference just because we're so zoomed out as opposed to it being cropped to a real tight headshot like that. So right now this image is looking pretty good. I think the only thing I want to do is probably prime this area a little bit because the color looks a little bit off. Okay, and I don't think that's mixing with her face well. So we're just going to try to find a color that's a little bit better for her and maybe a little bit more on the red spectrum would be good for her. Okay, and that does look a little better. So if I toggle that on and off, there we go. That looks a little bit more saturated, a little bit more natural. So if this is the look that you're going for, really smooth, really soft, really glamour type look, you're done. This isn't really the type of look that I like to go for. I like things to be polished, but I like them to be a little bit more natural. So I'm just gonna duplicate my original layer and I'm gonna bring it all the way to the top. And now this is a complete before essentially because the unedited, the unedited image is on top. So I'm gonna to toggle it on and off so you see the before and after. Here's the before, here's the after. You could see how smooth it made her skin. I'm gonna do it one more time and then we're gonna zoom in before and after. And you could see how nice the shine on her forehead is. It looks nice and soft. It looks like it was powdered. And we're gonna go before and after again before, after, you could see the little blemish down here, her chin, the forehead, the under the eyes and the crow's feet, the sweat on the mustache area, it's all gone where you could see it all here, right? So let's get rid of it. And now what I'm gonna do again, because I like the more natural look, I'm gonna keep this layer on top and I'm just gonna turn down the opacity until I find something I like. And that looks pretty nice to me. I'm at 28% right now. You know what, I'm big on numbers, let's go with 30%. Okay, so now let's toggle this on and off. And this is the completely retouched image. And this is with the original image layered on top of all the effects at 30%. And you could see how it just has like a little bit of character in it. It has a little bit of detail. It has a little bit of wrinkles. And this looks really nice to me. This looks more normal, more natural. I really like this. And let's zoom out so we get a better feel of the effect. And here it is. And now this is completely retouched, but again, it looks a little fake and plasticky to me. And this is with the original image overlaid at 30%, and I really love this. So this was a face retouch using a bunch of features in Photolite Pro, and this was about a 15 minute retouch. For all the work that we did, for this to be done in only 15 minutes, this is absolutely amazing. And again, this pack is only $24.99. I was uncertain about this pack at first. I was uncertain when I saw it in the ads, especially for the price. I'm telling you, this thing is so worth it. It is very simple to use. It takes only a little bit of practice. Granted, we only did the face, Leave a comment below if you want to see me retouch the rest of the skin. And please leave me a comment and let me know. Do you like the final image that I like as well with the 30% opacity overlay? Or do you like the completely fake, completely retouched look? Please let me know your opinion. Thanks for watching.